What happens when a former classic winner has another meltdown? And how you walked off stage like a book. You are supposed to be a top pro and kids idle you and you walked off like a child. <laughs> Can we say that? Uh, how about you suck and that's Chad, suck my Chad. Chad, suck my and come meet me right now. We'll take care of that. Next. That's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, please hit that like and subscribe button. Again, thank you to everyone, all the new subscribers, all the people who are interactive and are commenting on the, the, the videos, all the people who are watching it, all the new subscribers, all the new members. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. It's humbling. But if you're not a subscriber, you should be. So click that button and welcome to the team. Just when we think all of the punches have stopped from the St. Lawrence River, we get a hidden gem. Now, I didn't see this live, and it's because I, I'm just going to be honest. I don't watch a lot of, I really don't watch any podcasts, fishing podcasts. I like watching basketball and racing, and there's all sorts of other stuff, swimming for the bubba and stuff, but I don't watch many fishing podcasts at all. So I don't want that to be a, a slight against Ike and Ellie at all. But this little hidden gem was found by a Cerebral Tackle, and it is quite impressive of a meltdown. And I wanna make it very clear. I don't agree with what was said and done. However, I'm gonna take the other side on this one. But at the end, I wanna know you what you think. So get ready to comment and wait till the end and listen to what I think is gonna, what I think is my opinion. Mike Iconelli is one of the fan favorites in our community. Either you like him a lot or you don't. He is a 2006 classic winner. He is very vocal, he's very emotional, and he wears his emotions on his sleeve. And this isn't the first time we've seen an absolute meltdown, but when you're a fierce competitor and things don't go your way, sometimes you have to let it out. If you don't remember this, he tied at the TTBC and had to catch one fish, and it didn't happen, and this happened. And over the years, I've had plenty of time to not only interview Mike, but actually sit down while he was doing tackle, getting ready for a tournament for the Major League Fishing Summit Cup here on the Harris Chain, and just spend really a lot of time with him. I probably annoyed him, to be honest. And while when you do interviews, you get a certain type of angler, a certain type of response, when you're able to just sit down and just be wholehearted and talk about family and life and fishing and everything else that happens around fishing, you kind of get a better example of what a person is. Mike is one of these guys that is very emotional. He's very emotional. He wants to win all the time. Mike has an organization that he runs that is all about getting tackle into kids' hands and teaching them how to fish. And that is something that is very near and dear to my heart. This meltdown that happened on his live podcast was something I believe shouldn't happen. But at the same time, you have to realize that this is someone that is very emotional. But like I said, meltdowns happen. This one shouldn't have happened, but I'm going to tell you why I think it did. And how you walked off stage like a book. You are supposed <laughs> to be a top pro and kids idle you and you walked off like a child. <laughs> Can we say that? Uh, uh, how about you suck <laughs> and that's Chad suck my <laughs> Chad. <laughs> Chad suck my <laughs> and come meet me right now. We'll take care of that. Next. I think over the last few years Ike and Ellie has had a real roller coaster. In 2024 he was 94th in Angler of the Year points. 2023 he was 47th and then 2022 he was 84th this is not where he should be this has actually been three horrible years for one of the greats that's out there and the last two years have been pretty bad he's had a 41st a 10th 11th a 34th a 48th a 68th a 73rd an 86th and a 79th in 2023 2024 was even worse with a 90th 67th 14th 96th, 18th, 96th, 98th, 79th, and 85th as the tournament ended. He hasn't made any classics in three years. And when you have the pressure that's put on him 
to deliver and the emotion and the passion that he has when you don't get the results that you want you break down since returning back to the elites it hasn't been as successful as he probably wanted and wished and the elite series is has fierce competition i mean fierce competition the waters are now challenging the fish are more pressured than ever forward-facing sonar and technology have a huge influence on who's doing well and who isn't and all these things come into play as long as making sponsors happy and delivering for those sponsors and friends and family and other anglers talking to you and saying what's going on what's happening and when you have those kind of pressures sometimes you break down ah! Ah! Three ah! and it isn't mandatory for mike to talk to mercer after a tournament if he's upset after that day he can walk off. There's nothing wrong with it. He isn't, this isn't the NBA where you're required to go talk to press afterwards. And I'm not saying Mercer is press. Mercer is, Mercer's Mercer. And I think it's, it does, it does a little bit of injustice that he didn't go talk to him. And when the public continuously pokes the bear and they poke and poke and poke and are overly critical and complain or say negative things, it's tough to take all that in. It's tough to absorb it and just go, okay, it's all right for you to make me a punching bag. And that's what I think is happening with some of these guys. Technology has really made the great great and the people who don't like it crap. And while there's some anglers that are still competing at a really good level, forward-facing sonar and technology is a reason why these meltdowns happen. So now here's some questions I want you to answer for me. First off, do we hold this against him because he did it? Do we not just give him a pass and say, it's all right to have this emotion, it's all right to have this passion, and while you were wrong, if you apologize for it, can we just forgive and forget it? Is this passion that he has for fishing, is it a negative or positive for him? Can he use this to propel himself and build on what happens, and build on what's going on, and make himself a better person and a better angler? Last. Can it be stopped and do we really want it to be stopped? To be honest, I wasn't going to put, make this video. I've thought about this video for two or three days. But I wanted to take the other side of it because I do see, I can see both sides of this. I don't think it's right to go out there and just completely do that live. I think you could hold back and just make a comment or make something positive or do something different than just swear and call this guy out to come fight because really you're talking to a live screen do you think this guy can show up but where do you stand on this whole thing can we forgive and forget what is your thoughts is it something that should be stopped i want to know so comment below and tell me what you think i really do appreciate all the new subscribers and comments and everything if i don't say it enough i'm going to try to say it but at some point i'll stop because i know people are probably pissed off about it but i have to do it because it's just overwhelming humbling and it's just made this more interesting and fun for me so thank you okay so take a kid fishing get your fish on thank you again cheers tight lines